I'm gonna show you one move that 99% of pros do on their forehand side that once you know, you'll never be able to look at any other forehand the same way again. And I'm not talking about mimicking forehands like Sinner or Djokovic or Federer. I'm talking about a fundamental move that if you start doing, it's gonna increase your power, consistency, and control over your forehand. Now, the reason this video is different is because we're not gonna talk about the usual thing that I think a lot of players or people associate, which is like how to rotate your body, maybe lag and snapping, stuff like that, or positions. Because here's the problem. When we think about a position, we forget about the function. And what I mean by this is that so many players are hitting the spots but they don't realize that the spots are just functions of the position hear me out so just like when you take your racket up here for this first spot and then you try to hit the second spot well you just hit the position but you didn't achieve the function the whole point of when you take your racket up here is then let gravity do the work and then you can start assisting gravity as it's already done the work for your forehand but if you don't know that and you're just hitting the spots you're not going to get the results you're looking for and this is why this video is different from every other video out there this is why it's so important to stop copying pros because you're copying their personality and not their fundamentals and so don't do it in your tennis game because you're always going to be a copy that's not as good as the original. The key is understanding those fundamentals and the functions of those fundamentals and then build your personality around it, how you like to swing, how you might like to position your body. And this is why you don't see anybody's forehand the exact same. Now make sure you watch this video all the way to the end because at the end I'm going to do a bonus section of how you can hit a heavier forehand just like the pros. Now not because we're going to copy what they do per se, we're going to understand the fundamentals of what we're going to learn here. Now we're going to watch some pros side by side so we can see the same move that 99% if not 100% of pros do that you should start doing because it's a fundamental move that will add more power and leverage to your swing. So now that we're looking at pros, I want you to look at this move that happens every time. Now here's the thing where I don't want you to get mixed up on. Some players might start looking at this and going, well, this is what I need to do. That's not necessarily the fundamental move I'm talking about. The fundamental move starts right here. This is a leverage position. And the key is why are they all doing this? And when I mean all of them, I mean all of them. Here's Rafa Nadal, that same position we were talking about. Don't be fooled by it. Now, look at this position. Again, the leverage position. Here's Novak Djokovic. Again, getting to the leverage position. Here's Dominic Thiem. Again, getting to this fundamental leverage position. We have Yannick Sinner getting to the fundamental position. This position is so important that they all do it. And the question is, why should you start doing it in your tennis game? Let's find out. So now that you understand this position, let's understand the function of the position because that position acts as a hammer or a leverage movement. And what I mean by that is you think about leverage, think about a seesaw. If I have the fulcrum in the middle and we're going up and down, as I add weight, the racket moves evenly. But if I move the fulcrum here, look what now happens. A little bit of energy makes the racket move a lot. And so you're probably saying like, how does this work with tennis? Stick with me one second. So if we think about a tennis stroke, this is actually being leveraged or I'm leveraging my racket, meaning that the butt of the racket is my lever now, okay? I'm applying force to the handle, which makes the head go faster into the racket. Now here's the problem a lot of players face when they're using or hitting forehands. They don't leverage. So what that means is if I take my hammer example, which one's gonna have more force from the head? Me hammering like this, Okay, aka like this, the racket and the hand moving at the same time, or where I put myself in this position where now I can create leverage and now move the racket way faster. I don't wanna put my hand there because I will probably break my finger. Obviously this one. And so this is really key to understand this movement because if you can start leveraging your racket, guess what, you get more power. And the beautiful thing about this, why I haven't talked about, let's say, lagging and snapping or rotation, is there's some times where you may not be in a position to rotate because you're just in a tough situation. And even if I understand how to leverage my racket, I can hit that type of ball without rotating. Rotating is another extra factor that if we add on to that, man, it'll send your forehand overboard. Now, the very first drill I want you to do is grab your racket and use it like a hammer. Now, here's a couple things, because when I do this drill a lot, this is what happens players start to forget about using a hammer and think about using the racket. So they do this. Now, are you leveraging your racket? Yes, but I'm not applying maximum force. If I want to apply more force, what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull down. I'm going to pull down. You can now see how I get a lot more force than just this. Now, one other key note is that my wrist is relaxed, but it's not really working that much. Really, my wrist starts to come down because the racket head, the force starts bringing it down. I don't have to make it go down. If I pull my arm, it comes around. Okay, so that's the key. So just practice this a lot. Practice, go around the house just doing this right now. 
So now the next thing is we want to flip it to the side. So my analogy for this is we went from hammering here is that you're going to hang a picture and the nails right here. And so we now want to do this from the side and want to have the same motion. Now, what you might find yourself doing, which is totally okay, is I want to pull my body. So we might switch hammers here and go for a sledgehammer and we're trying to put a hole in the wall. And so you could do this which is totally fine. But if you really want to get some more acceleration, you go this way. And really, I'm just casually turning my body. But since I'm leveraging, you can see I have that same hammering action. It's just sideways. Next, we now go from here and we flip it into our grip. Our hammer head changes. We went from this always being the hammer head to now our strings. And so now with my grip, what I want to do is start hammering the nail, okay? And I'm going to do it with my body. And you can see how right here, yes, I can rotate or I cannot, I don't have to rotate, but obviously rotating will start increasing the amount of force I put towards the handle, okay? And make sure you watch all the way to the end because I'm gonna show you how to get excessive topspin, okay? So now we have this action going up to the ball. And I want you to practice this, even with getting used to the swing. And from here, now we can start going and then practicing just hammering the ball. And I'm very loose and notice how it has a lot of power. You might hit a couple long. That's totally okay. Get used to just feeling the difference of now pulling the hammer into the ball and you'll already have a ton of acceleration. Now, here's the thing about the control. You don't have to swing wild and crazy, which causes you to lose control because you're leveraging your racket. The racket head's moving faster without you kind of getting crazy and losing control of your body. Now, the next thing you might be asking is how does this fit with my normal stroke? I, am I just going to start running around like that? No, you can, but you don't have to. Now, whatever your normal stroke is, just like we saw in the pros, they usually have a portion where they're trying to take the racket back. This is the preparation phase. And then generally right before they're about to swing, boom, we get into this position. So however your swing goes, I can take it back and then pull my racket into that position. Now, one quick thing, if you find your ball still going long, make sure at the end you watch this video, because really the only reason it's going long is because of probably one of two things right now. It's your racket face at contact, if it's, if it's too open or too closed, and it's your path. Meaning that as I come up more, I'm going to create more top spin. And then I want to make sure my racket face tells the ball where to how high to go. So if I come up more and have the racket face really open, even hammering, you can see how it goes much higher. But if I don't come up as much and then close the racket face, I get a ball that's like that. That's got plenty of spin, plenty of power, plenty of drive without doing a lot of things. From here, now you may want to use your normal stroke, meaning just go ahead and do your normal take back and then make sure right before you're about to hit the ball, you achieve that hammer position, which means you're going to have more acceleration and more control. Now, I've been talking about that one bonus. How do I get that heavy ball? Like you see these pros and they just whip through the ball. Well, understanding this is the first key to making sure that happens is that they're leveraging the racket to speed up. What we want to do if we want to start creating more spin is we need a kind of whip or a lag. This is where you will talk about more lagging and that happens just from a being relaxed for one and then setting the racket somewhere either on the outside of my body, meaning right here. Okay. Or even sometimes facing forward. There's tons of variations. And this is why, again, you don't want to copy the variation for each pro is specific to their timing, to their, their, their liking of where they want to play on the court. You see a Roger Federer. And so when he's here, he's here because it's a very short lag, meaning from here to here, where you see a player, let's say, uh, who has his racket like this, like maybe a Dominic team who's always got his racket like this. He needs more time. Hence he plays further behind the baseline. He can still have a great forehand, but that's personal to him and his style. Again, why we don't want to copy the pros. We want to understand the function. Okay. So what you want to do is start testing out where it feels comfortable for you. I would say start right here. So when I'm pulling the racket, what's going to happen is when I go to my hammer position, if I'm really relaxed, I'm going to start pulling that hammer. And as the racket head gets left behind, it'll drop below the wrist. Now here's the thing. As my arm starts speeding up, AKA hammering, the racket head is going to start speeding up, going up and through the ball that's going to create more spin and more penetration at the same time. This is why you see they have massively heavy balls because they're making sure that as they pull forward, they have the drive of pulling and hammering the ball, but the racket head is moving up. And finally, this is why you want to start listening to your body. Now that you understand that you're supposed to hammer the ball, start feeling out where does it feel more comfortable? Like even when I start swinging, I go to what feels comfortable to me to hit the ball. It may be different for you. So if you do this and it doesn't feel comfortable, 
<laughs> don't fret. Understand the function of making sure that we're hammering the ball and then figure out what works best for you. Maybe it's here, maybe it's here. Some pros are here. Maybe it's a bigger swing, maybe it's a shorter swing. Either way, as long as you stick with those fundamentals of understanding how to create that, that hammering effect before you hit the ball, and obviously have things like rotation of your body, you're gonna be in a good spot. Now, if you wanna learn more about how you can really take your game to the next level by executing, once you get this, execute, make sure you watch this video because it'll really help you understand what you should be focused on to get your game to the next level.